Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Today is Trinity Sunday, a whole liturgical day dedicated to one of the stranger, more esoteric doctrines of the Christian faith, that God is both one and three. One God, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Mother, Child, Breath of Life, and yet somehow intimate and inextricable. Now, what on earth does that even mean? Here's the thing about theology, though. It doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's not as if a bunch of philosophers types got together with a bottle of scotch and said, now, how should we describe God? No, theology is forged from real life. Ordinary people living out their ordinary lives, trying to describe the experience of an extraordinary God. These doctrines, this theology, it is lived experience of who God is. For example, we confess that God is a trinity because experience teaches us that our God values complexity. If we're looking for complexity, we need look no further than the doubters in Matthew 28. Did you notice them? I've read this passage countless times, and I have to confess it was not until this week that I picked up on the doubters. The disciples meet their risen Lord on a mountaintop. Jesus commissions them to make disciples of all nations. And as an aside, Matthew says, when they saw him, they worshiped, but some doubted. Matthew continues on with the story, but I want to know more about the doubters. As in, which disciples doubted? Was it Thomas, like in John? Was it Peter, the one who earlier in Matthew's Gospel tries walking on the water but loses his courage and begins to sink? And Jesus reaches out and he catches him and he says, You of little faith, why did you doubt? Is Matthew trying to tell us that some of the disciples doubted the resurrection? Or rather, is Matthew trying to show us complex experience of all of the disciples. The Greek here can be read two ways. It can mean they worshipped him, but some doubted. Or he could be saying they worshipped him and they doubted. That's a much more realistic image, isn't it? I can identify with that one. For we are both doubting believers, believing doubters, depending on the day. We are mixed bags, are we not? Multifaceted people, doubting believers. Jesus doesn't separate doubt on that holy mountain. Or belief. Instead, he blesses, blesses and commissions them all, tells them to baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a triune God, one and three, who values, embraces, embodies complexity. In the same way, we confess that God is a trinity, three and one, because we have witnessed how our God delights in diversity. Anne just read us one of the stories of creation, a great, big, long, liturgical list of the things God made and called good. And oh, what a list it is. Our triune God makes not just believers and doubters and doubting believers, but night, 
and day, and sun and stars and vegetables and fruits and birds and sea monsters and cattle, and in one translation it says the creeping things. <laughs> I might have preferred God stopped before God made the creeping things. God creates and divides and creates again, fanning out creation into greater complexity, greater diversity, until finally on the sixth day, our triune God says, let us make humankind in our image. And God creates us. The utterly complex, beautifully diverse beings that we are. But for the rest of the world, perhaps, it is also the first Sunday of June, the month when we celebrate Pride. A month to thank God for the utter diversity of people that our triune God creates. So diverse, in fact, that some wise soul looking at the gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, blah, 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 made the decision that we should stop adding letters to the ever-evolving LGBTQIA the, and just put a plus sign. God is too diverse for our letters. <laughs> our session decided to hang our pride flag again this June to bear witness to the truth that our God delights in diversity. It's a sacred and important message for the church at a time when we see states passing and enforcing laws that limit the rights and deny the humanity of queer folks, especially queer kids. But God is a trinity. A trinity which means God votes against those laws with God's very self. God's being, God's existence requires the infinite diversity, the utter complexity of the people God created. Laws like that are kind of obvious, right? It's a little blatant and in your face, but there's also a subtler, more insidious version of this impulse, one that we see on a daily basis. We've talked about this before. It's the problem of substituting tolerance or acceptance for delight. Y'all, when I came out, and you know, I was a little late to that party, but I can't tell you how many people, good Christian people, responded with something along the lines of, that's okay, I still love you. I don't think there's anything wrong with you. No, really? <laughs> Is that the best we've got? I was thinking I just shared with you a piece of my God-given identity and all your responses is, don't worry, I don't hate you. Followers of Jesus, we can do so much better. And so we do. In the face of outright hostility and begrudging tolerance, we hang our flag. Because God delights in diversity. Because our triune God can't exist without diversity. Because the infinite diversity of humankind is the very thing that reflects the image of God. I wonder, are there parts of you that you fear people are merely tolerating. Are you too loud? Too shy? Too poor? Embarrassingly rich? Do you cry too easily? Do you live with mental illness or a disability? Does your life story include an addiction criminal record, or regrets that you just can't seem to shake? Do you believe? Do you doubt? Do you not know where in this complex world you belong? 
Friends, hear the good news. The God we worship is a trinity. Those parts of our identities that we hide or feel shame about, they're not liabilities. On the contrary, they are the very image of God. And finally, we confess that God is a trinity because we have seen that God's very existence is relationship. That's the crux on which it all hangs, isn't it? God's love, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, dancing in this cosmic dance together. God is love. And love is relationship. On Trinity Sunday, Jesus gathers his disciples on the mountain. Doubting believers, believing doubters, and everything in between. And he sends them forth into the whole world. He says, go and make disciples of all nations. Go and baptize all the people. Baptize them in the name of the triune God. And know that I am with you always until the end of the age. Christ commissions them. Christ commissions us. <coughs> Go. Reflect that beautiful image of our triune God into every last corner of the world. Thanks be to God.